Amen. Praise God. Come on now. Amen. God is good, isn't he? Yes. Amen. It's good to see everybody this morning. It's a beautiful morning, isn't it? Beautiful, beautiful morning. Hey, Sister Latanya, how you doing? Work got you, huh? Uh huh. She she started a new job, you know, and you know when you start a new job, yeah, we we thank God for it, yeah. Yeah, she's a little bit tired, you can tell, but we're going to lift her up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is just good, and we just praise him for his goodness, and we thank him for the distance that we have come in the conquest stage. We're in the book of Joshua. So, so turn with me, please, to the book of Joshua. We were ending last, um, last Sunday. We were talking about how uh, that one person can spoil it for everybody. One person can spoil it for everybody. And that's what, ha what kind of happened at the uh, end of the story that we were talking about last Sunday as they went up to Ai to try to conquer Ai after they had the victory at Jericho. God had given them the victory at Jericho. And so now they're getting ready to go in and conquer Ai. But Achan went in and Achan had a, a spirit of uh, envy uh, that came over him and he coveted what was, was supposed to be set aside for the Lord's treasury. He coveted that for himself. And because he committed that sin, uh, it didn't say that uh, Achan had sinned, but, but Israel had. So Israel had to suffer the consequences of one person's action. That, that reminded me of, of Jonah. Y'all remember the story of Jonah? As Jonah, God had told Jonah to go down to Nineveh, but instead of him doing what God was uh, told him to do, he did what he wanted to do. And he got on a boat, and when he got on the boat, the, the, the storm came up. And when the storm came up, the people trying to figure out what in the world is going on. And, and Vivian, they started throwing off their stuff, the stuff that they needed. So, so then you can have somebody in your circle to cause you to lose your stuff. The stuff that you need because they're not doing what they're supposed to do. They are supposed to do. And so it behooves us to be conscious of who we have in our circle. It behooves us to be conscious of who we allow that we associate ourselves with. Because one person can't mess it up for everybody. And so after the victory at Ai, uh, 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 they, well, they had the defeat, but then God, God fixed it and went back and gave them the victory. So we ended up last Sunday with them uh, being victorious at Ai. And so uh, after that, let's go to chapter um, 8. Let's go to chapter 8 of Joshua. So um, in chapter 8, let's go all the way over to uh, verse 30, all the way over to verse 30. So Joshua here is getting ready to interrupt the military activities to give Israel a time to make a new commitment. So you have to have an opportunity to step back and see what God has done, to step back so you can give God thanks for bringing you thus far. Yeah. But looking all along the way, counting every step and saying that it was the Lord's doing. He brought us this for. And so now it's time for them to make a commitment to the authority uh, of God as it was expressed in his law. Now we have to understand that Israel is here still under the law. They're under the law. So uh, Joshua led the people to Shechem. And Shechem lies in the valley between Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim. Now, that should sound familiar to us because we talked about that in Deuteronomy. So we're going to go back and revisit that. But in Joshua chapter 8, verse 30, it says, Then Joshua built an altar unto the Lord God of Israel in Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones 
over which no man hath lift up any iron, and they offered their own burnt offerings unto the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings. And he wrote there upon the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. So to, for us to revisit that, let's go back to Deuteronomy. Let's go back to Deuteronomy, the 27th chapter. Deuteronomy 27. Remember, Moses was making a farewell speech, and you remember his speech went on and on and on, and he told them some things that they needed to do when they got over into the land that God promised them. And um, in chapter 27, we'll start at verse 1. Are you there? It says, And Moses with the elders of Israel commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. And it shall be on the day when ye shall pass over Jordan unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, that thou shalt set thee up great stones and plaster them with plaster. And thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law when thou art passed over, that thou mayest go in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, a land that floweth with milk and honey, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee. Therefore it shall be, when ye be gone over Jordan, that ye shall set up these stones which I command you this day in Mount Ebal, and thou shalt plaster them with plaster. And there shalt thou build an altar unto the Lord thy God, an altar of stones. Thou shalt not lift up any iron tool upon them. So see, now Joshua is being obedient and doing just what Moses commanded. He said, Thou shalt build the altar of the Lord thy God of whole stones, and thou shalt offer burnt, burnt offerings thereon unto the, Lord, unto the Lord thy God. And thou shalt offer peace offerings, and shalt eat there, and rejoice before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law very plainly. And Moses and the priests, the Levites, spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed, and hearken, O Israel, this day, Thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. And Moses charged the people the same day, saying, These shall stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people when ye come over Jordan. So he took the tribes, remember that, and he, um, he broke the tribes up uh, into half. Half were out on Mount Gerizim, half were on Mount Ebal, with the Levites in the middle there. And so he says, and these shall stand upon Mount Ebal to curse. And then he, he named the tribes that would be on Mount Ebal and the tribes that would be on Mount Gerizim. Go back to Joshua, the eighth chapter. I'm in verse 33. It said, And all Israel and their elders and officers and their judges stood on this side the ark and on that side before the priests, the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, as well the stranger as he that was born among them, half of them over against Mount Gerizim, we just read that, and half of them over against Mount Ebal, we just read that as Moses the servant of the Lord had commanded before that they should bless the people of Israel. And afterward he read all the words of the law, the blessings and cursings. He didn't leave anything out. See, right now they're ready to be obedient because they saw what their disobedience had gotten them. So now he's following it to the letter of the law, what Moses had told them to do. And so uh, the blessings and cursings according to all that is written in the book of the law, there was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read not before all the congregation of Israel with the women and the little ones and the strangers that were uh, conversant among them. And so um, 
They were on Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim. They were getting the blessings. They were understanding the blessings. Everything that they would, everything that Joshua would read, they would say amen to, to let them know that we understand and we're willing to obey. Read the, read the blessings. We understand and we're willing to obey. So, uh, so in their mind, they're ready to go on and they're ready to claim their inheritance. But do you know that while uh, God is giving you victory, and do you know while uh, you're rehearsing the blessings of the Lord in your mind that the devil is still busy? Do you know that the devil is on his job 24-7? Do you understand that? So I know a lot of times we get tired in this uh, race that we're running. We get tired uh, on this journey, and we get tired of the battles that we're fighting. But just know this. That when you sit down to take a breath, that every breath that you take in to get your strength back, the devil is still working, trying to get you to quit, trying to get you to fall down, trying to get you to give up. So he's, there's never a time he's not on his job. So while you're taking a breath, because you're just too tired to go on, he's still scheming, trying to see how he can get you to sit down. And so while Israel was on Mount Ebal and while they were on Mount Gerizim reaffirming the commitment to the Lord, the kings there in Canaan were coming together, getting ready to attack. Look at chapter 9. And it came to pass when all the kings which were on this side, Jordan, in the hills and in the valleys and in all the coasts of the great sea, over against Lebanon, the Hittite, and the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite heard thereof that they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. And so they had heard about Jericho. They had heard about that great miracle, that all that they did was march around the walls and gave a great shout. And after they gave that great shout, the walls just fell flat. They heard about that. They heard about how they went up into Ai and how God was victorious, how uh, they uh, set an ambush for Ai and that God gave Ai over into their hands. They heard about that. And so if they heard about that, now let me tell you something. The devil is not going to give up without a fight. The devil is not just going to lay down and let you just walk over him. So the devil is going to fight until the very end. And so they gathered themselves together. Now, here's the thing about the devil. Here's the thing about your enemy. Can I say it like that? Your enemy, even though a lot of times, Pastor Bland, they may not like each other. But they'll band together. They'll band together so that they can bring you down because they don't want to see you successful. And so I don't want you walking around in La La Land thinking that everybody like you and that it's, and that it's okay and that, oh, that's just them. They don't mean it and it's all right. No, the devil, your enemies will come together just to see you fall. Oh, they'll band together. They'll band together. Look at Psalm 83. Look at Psalm 83. I'm telling you there's something that's uh, not just happening. It's been happening since the beginning of time. Since the beginning of time. Oh, everybody's not going to like you. Can we come to that conclusion? Can we just come to that conclusion? Everybody's not going to like you. When I came to that understanding, I could do a whole lot better. When I came to that understanding, you know, because I'm the kind of person, I just want everybody to like me. And I'm just thinking, oh, I can get along with everybody. But just the fact of the matter is when I understood, well, everybody not going to like me because I don't like everybody. Can I just be truthful this morning? And so, no, I'm just, I'm not going to get along with everybody. It would be my hope that I would, but now I, I have sense enough to know in 59 years that it's just not going to happen. And so I have to face reality. That's a reality check for me. And so in Psalm 83, uh, in Psalm 83, and I am looking at uh, verse 3. Let's start at verse 3. It says, they have taken craft, crafty counsel against thy people 
and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And this is what they, Israel, they were trying at every point, trying to cut Israel off. They were trying at every point because they'd heard about this great God that they served. And they didn't want God to get the glory because they had their own gods. They wanted to give their gods the glory. And so it says, for uh, they have consulted together with one. One consent, they are confederate against thee. They are confederate against thee. You go back, you can go back to Joshua. I just want you to see, even if you think about, you remember the story of Jehoshaphat, how his enemies came together over in Second Chronicles, and you don't, have to, you don't have to turn there, but it said the enemies, they are coming. It's not just one, not just two, but three. They're banding together to come against you. Not just, you can go back to the story of Nehemiah. When Nehemiah was trying to build the wall, when the enemies came together, Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem, when they came together to try to hinder him from doing what the Lord had told him to do. Oh, they will band together, my friends, when they see you and your wife trying to get along. They'll band together to come up with a plan to break you and your wife up. They'll pit her against you. They'll whisper in her ear something that will make her look at you like you all crazy. They'll whisper in your ear to make you think that she is lacking something or there's something else that she needs in order for y'all to be happy. Uh, they'll do it on your job. They'll do it in your home. They'll, and, 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 and it's all by design. Don't think it just happened. Don't think it just happened. Nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. Mm -mm. It doesn't just happen. And so, um, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, then. Uh, nothing just happened. And so they gathered themselves together. In, in Joshua chapter 9, verse 2, they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. With one accord. They made a plan. It wasn't haphazard. They made a plan. This is how we're going to do it. This is what we need to do because uh, they're coming in. Uh, because, see, all of these cities, all of those kings, they were in territories, they were in cities that were going to be conquered by Israel. So then they had a kingdom that they wanted to hold on to. Because when Israel went in, Israel was going in to destroy everything. Plunder the city and take all of the, all of the, uh, 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 the, the gold, the silver, everything in there. It was, it was there for them. God put that there just for them. And so they were terrified and they were willing to do whatever they had to do to hold on to it. And so again, I want to say, so they had the victory at Jericho. They had the blessings at uh, uh, the, the victory at Ai. But here again, we have to be, uh, we have to be very cognizant of the way the devil works. Right. Because after you experience a great blessing, Take your time. after you experience success, and after you experience victory, uh, you got to be prepared right. for the onslaught yeah. of the enemy. Because that's just when he's going to come, when you least expect it. Because you're sitting down and you're taking a breather. And you're sitting down saying, just, oh, thank you, Lord. You've been so good. Thank you for bringing me over. It's just when you're lifting your hands when the devil gets ready to come in to attack. Uh-uh, he comes in to attack. He comes in to attack. So just because you've had a great blessing, don't mean that you can, does not mean that you can sit down and take it easy. Uh-uh, you got to keep it moving. You got to keep it moving. And you got to be willing. You got to, you got to, okay, the enemy's going to come. So what are you going to do when the enemy comes? Okay, so let's look at this. Uh, chapter 9, verse 3. So now, when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard that Joshua, what, what Joshua had done unto Jericho, Jericho and to Ai, they did work wildly and went and made as if they had been ambassadors 
and took old sacks, okay, wildly, just another word for they went and they, uh, they, they beguiled them or they tricked them. They, they tricked them. They, they, they made a fool out of them, okay? So the devil, again, we're talking about the devil this morning because we want to expose him because he has tricks and he has devices. Now, they're all tricks and they're all devices, but sometimes he comes to, they come in different ways. So, so he's just the old, he's the old same, you know, he's not, not, he's not original at all. He's not original at all. However, he can come in a way that you think he's something else. That you think he's not really what he is. So, you know, so you make friends with the devil. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Make friends with the devil. Because you get so comfortable. You get so comfortable, you let your guard down. You let your guard down, and then you be thinking, oh, that's, that's, that's my friend. That's my friend. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. And they did work wildly and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks. Now, I want to say that Gibeon, let, let's just stop and talk about Gibeon. Gibeon. So Gibeon was a, a town there in Canaan, just 25 miles down the road, 25 miles from where they were, 25 miles down the road. And Gibeon was one of the towns, one of the places that was going to be destroyed. Because when they went in, what were they supposed to do? They were supposed to go in and destroy everybody, every. So that was one of the places that had to be destroyed. So Gibeon... The people in Gibeon came up with a scheme. Uh -huh. sure did. The scheme was, and, and here's something else. Now, the devil hears the word just like we hear the word. Yes. You don't know that? And so there was, uh, there was, in Deuteronomy, let's go over to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. There was kind of like a clause in the law that would protect a far country, okay? And so some kind of a way, Gibeon knew about that law. So they heard that just like the children of Israel heard that. Some kind of a way they found out about it and they used that to their advantage. So here's what the law said. In Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter, the 10th through the 20th verse, you read it, but I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. It says this, starting at the 10th verse. As you approach a town to attack it, you must first offer its people terms of peace. If they accept your terms and open the gates to you, then all the people inside will serve you in forced labor. But if they refuse to make peace and prepare to fight, you must attack the town. When the Lord your God hands the town over to you, use your swords to kill every man in the town. But you may keep for yourselves all the women, children, livestock, and other plunder. You may enjoy the plunder from your enemies that the Lord your God has given you. But these instructions, and, and see, this is what Gibeon, the devil is slick. But these instructions apply only to distant towns not to the towns of the nations and the land you will enter. In those towns that the Lord your God has given you as a special possession, destroy everything, every living thing. You must completely destroy the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Parasites, Evites, Hivites, and Jebusites, just as the Lord your God has commanded you. This will prevent the people of the land from teaching you to imitate their detestable customs in the worship of their gods, which would cause you to sin deeply against the Lord your God. When you are attacking a town and the war drags on, you must not cut down the trees with your axes. You may eat the fruit, but do not cut down the trees. Are the trees your enemies that you should attack them? You may only cut down trees that you know are not valuable for food. Use them to make the equipment you need to attack the enemy town until it fails. Now, go back over to Joshua. Let's, let's look at what the Gibeonites did. All right. <laughs> so uh, 
somehow they knew about this law and they decided to use it for their own protection. So we've already read they assembled a group of men. When they assembled the group of men, they made them to look like they were yes. an official yes. delegation yes. from a foreign country, a foreign city rather. Yes. Made it look like they had come all the way over from a long, long way. And so they deceived Israel. They deceived Israel. They said, they, 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 in verse uh, 5, chapter 9 of Joshua, verse 5. And so, well, let me go back to verse 4 and finish that. They did work wildly and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks uh -huh. upon their asses yeah. and wine bottles, old mm -hmm. and rent mm -hmm. and bound up, yeah. and old shoes yeah. and clouded upon their feet and old garments upon them. Mm -hmm. And all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. Yeah. And they went to Joshua unto the camp at Gilgal and said unto him and to the men of Israel, We be come from a far country. Now therefore make ye a league with us. Okay, remember the law we just read? Remember the law? This doesn't apply to those that's far away. This doesn't apply to those that's far off. Only to those that are in the, the, the area where you are, the cities in Canaan. But if they come from a far country, this doesn't apply to them. They knew that law. They heard that law. when They knew it. And so they said, make a league with us. In other words, come make a treaty with us. Come into alliance with us. Come into agreement with us. Because if they came into agreement with them, then what did the law say? That they, could, they didn't have to kill them. They didn't have to kill them. They had to keep them alive, but they could make them slaves. It says, and the men of Israel said unto the Hivites, peradventure ye dwell among us, and how shall we make a league with you? And they said unto Joshua, we are thy servants. And Joshua said unto them, who are ye? And from whence come ye? And they said unto him, from a very far country. See how quick it is to lie? See how quick it is to lie? But now, it's, it, it, now when you're trying to save your behind, come on now. You come up with not one lie, not two lies, but enough lies to save your behind. And so, and they said unto him, from a very far country, thy servants are come because of the name of the Lord thy God. For, for we have heard of the fame of him and all that he did in, is, in Egypt. And all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan, to Sion, king of Heshbon, and to Og, king of Bashan, which was at Ashtaroth. Wherefore, our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake to us, saying, listen at this, take victuals with you for the journey, and go to meet them, and say unto them, we are your servants. Therefore, now make ye a league with us. And, and look at this. This our bread. We took hot, still lying, still lying. Look at that. Y'all, people been doing it from the beginning of time. When, from the first lie after the first lie was told, people been lying ever since. Can I just say, we've been lying ever since. So it says, uh, we took it hot for our provision. Out of our houses on the day we came forth to go unto you. But now, behold, it is dry and molded. And these bottles of wine, which we feel, they were new. And these, our garments and our shoes are become old by reason of the very long journey. And the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel. Now they're talking about Israel now. And the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live. And the princes of the congregation swear unto them. And it amazes me how that they uh, wanted to inspect everything else. You mean they sent out spies to inspect Jericho. They want to inspect everything. But now when it comes to this, when it comes to something you want, you won't take the time to inspect it. And so then uh, I want us to talk about it. I want us to just talk about it. I want you to break yourself up into just several groups. You make your own groups. 
Now, in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, Ephesians says this, sixth chapter, 11 verse, you don't have to turn there, it's a familiar scripture, it says, put on the whole armor of God, yes. that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the wiles, the strategies, uh, against the wiles, the devices, against the wiles, the tricks, against the wiles, the deceitfulness of the devil. Put on the whole armor. So I want you to talk about this in your groups, and it looks like we might be kind of broken up into, let's do uh, two groups on this side and two groups on this side, split yourselves up, and talk about this. Why did the Gibeonites succeed with their deception? That's one question. Now, Tish, can you, can you flip all the way through the PowerPoint until you get to, let's talk about it, flip all the way th through until you get there. Okay, and that's not the right one. Do you see November 1 on, on the, um, you see November 1 on the uh, desktop? And if you don't, that's okay. Why did the Gibeonites succeed with their deception? That's number one. In what ways are we deceived by Satan. That's number two. Number one is why did the Gibeonites succeed with their deception? Okay. Number two is in what ways are we deceived by Satan? And number three, what keeps us from seeing the deception? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. There they are right there. Those are the questions. Break, split yourself up into four groups, two on this side, two on that side. And the questions are here on the screen. Okay, and y'all see Jean and, yeah, Jean and Jean and Mother. Say amen for them. Amen. He's getting his thoughts together. <laughs> tell you something that's true and it's not true, but they can tell you what you'll believe it. And that's the way They were convincing in their lie? Yeah. They were convincing? Okay. okay. Now, I, I do them real short. In what ways are we deceived by Satan? I, I, I see it like this, Pastor, that the way we are really deceived, we wear the clothes that we wear. We've tried to please people. You understand what I'm saying? The clothes that were, people will show you things, and, and, and I'll tell you what's the real thing about it. I, I, people, I went to churches where they wear these big old hats, and it, it's just a, a tradition, you know what I'm saying? And, and Satan is deceiving you by that, because I had a sister-in-law that was like that. I went to New Hope, I used to go to the Maze church a lot, and, and, and she sung, and those ladies, and those ladies, those dresses weren't right. You know, Satan would deceive you for that. And, and that, 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 that's like, good. Because <laughs> like, you wear a pretty dress now that like, don't make you look good. Then what keeps us from seeing the deception? The same thing. The same thing. We are hard. It had to be in your heart. Because Satan, the devil made me do it. The devil didn't make you do nothing. I'm telling you that right now. It was you that did it. You accept it. <laughs> All right, all right, <laughs> all right, okay, yes, yes, yes. Discernment, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to know what's what and who's what. Uh, and then you take your, 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 your friend and you think that's your friend. Like you said, if they're your enemy, you just don't know that. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Mother. Thank you, Mother. Thank you, Mother. All right. All right. Okay, we, someone needs to speak. Okay. They knew it. Same way Satan. Mm -hmm. He knew. Yeah. As I was saying, Satan know what you like. Mm-hmm. Lady Blaine. Mm -hmm. you know Come like. on, mother. Uh, Betty Miller used to always tell me, uh, you'll never be bothered with Satan through men, alcohol, and stuff like that, but he will get you through your children. That's right. And That's right. Uh, the majority of the time when I'm attacked, it's through my children. Through your children. I said something. I said, you know, I can stand for you to kick me. But you better not raise your foot at my child. No, I'm going to get you. And I am saved. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Let me qualify that. I'm being honest. I'm being honest. <laughs> so they had their plan well together. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a rough. In what way were they deceived by Satan? Again, they didn't. The leader, the leader, for it says here that Joshua, didn't even take time to consult God no, and the men that was, I'm going to say the counselor, didn't take time to consult mm -hmm. God about it, which is today, if we don't take time to consult God yes. about things, right. we will be deceived That's every right. time. Yes, we, we have to, and even with my children, you know, they can come in and tell some lies, especially when they were small. And, you know, my mom, the older people, they would say, go sit down. You know, and you go outside and get the plane, beat them, forgot what you said. Mm -hmm. Maybe about an hour later, they call you in and tell you, what did you say now? What did you say? You say, what did I say? Mm -hmm. You know, you can't get it together. And you say, and they say, I know you were lying. Mm -hmm. Well, see, they didn't even take time for none of that. They didn't pray about it. Mm -hmm. They didn't ask God. But now I wonder, my thing was, why didn't they? As uh, Shane said, when they sent the spies out in the land, they wanted to do this, check on this, and... Why not check on these? Mm -hmm. Because they were human. They saw mm -hmm. and said, oh, and that's us today. Praise we him. see, but do we pray about it? No. We see us a new hat. I haven't prayed about my new hat. I ain't telling no lie. And brother, I do <laughs> love my hat. And Lord said, so he has blessed me to get that hat. And I'm playing on what <laughs> What keep us from seeing, uh, from seeing deception is because we forget about God, we start on our own saying what we can see and what we, well, I know this, and I know that, but you don't. You always have to pray and seek God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And finally, the last words, last group, last words. We broke this up in three, three phases. So let's <laughs> take number one. I think there's one reason why they was deceived on the first go-round, because they didn't get to know the enemy. Mm -hmm. Because if they would have known the enemy, they may have been a little bit more careful about inviting them into their country. Okay. And then, and the, and the other point I came, uh, I came out with is by them not knowing the enemy, the, the enemy was able to throw them a loop and tell them <laughs> they're from, from a fall. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And by telling them from a so when they was right next door to them all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, 
All right. Okay. Okay. Um, in what ways are we deceived by? Go ahead. In what ways are we deceived by Satan? Uh, Satan never presents himself to us in an ugly way. He always comes to us in a pretty boat. And so it's deceiving because it comes to you as a happy place or something that's going to make you feel happy or something that's going to make you feel fulfilled when all the time that it's a trick. And so that, that's one of the ways that we are deceived by Satan. Okay, all right. never comes ugly. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, and finally. keeps us from seeing the deception. Uh, I think it's uh, when, you, when you go to a reprobate mind. You know what I mean? When you go over and you start doing things and uh, you stop looking at God, you start to get out of the word and you start looking at self. You know, and I, I think it's easy to do that than most people think. Uh, when you get off your square, when you get off your center and stop uh, aligning yourself with God and then you start isolation. Isolating yourself from things. Start isolating yourself from things. So I think it's uh, I think it's very easy to do that, man. It's just like eating. Uh, we want to we want to believe a lot. We want to believe something that's not true. Okay. Uh, like an unhealthy lifestyle, unhealthy living. Uh, most people like cake. Most people like uh, I know I like little Debbie cakes. <laughs> but, uh, uh, when you turn, when you turn to the back of that oatmeal pie box, and you turn to the back and you look, it has no nutritional value. It has nothing that can help you, and so it has zero things that can help you. And so uh, that's just like deception, man. It's just like Debbie cake, man. You can eat it; and it's good, but it ain't gonna do anything good for your body. It's a good analogy, I think. That's a great analogy. That, uh, you know, I recognize that uh, when you can take your eyes off of God, take off. If you put your focus off of you, keep your focus off of God, it will help you stay in line. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give everybody a hand for that. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for all of your comments. Thank you for participating. And so just just a, a thought for us as we take away uh, from this lesson this morning. Joshua, um, Joshua and uh, his people, they acted without care right. or thought and didn't consult the Lord. I think we all agreed on that. So, and, so in essence, they began to walk by sight rather than walk by faith. And, and, and I think we all can agree, when you're deceived, you see what you want to see. You see what you want to see. And if you want to see them as all good and caring and, and have your best interest at heart, that's what you're going to see. And so you're going to be blinded not to be able to call it what it really is, a trick. And he's never going to present it as something ugly. It's always going to be what you like. And it's always going to be what looks good to you. Give the Lord a hand praise, everybody.